Hi everybody, it's Sam here and today marks the start of my Easter series 2021. I think this is the fourth or fifth Easter series. I'll link all of the Easter projects up here because there's tons. I would start off with this card here. Now I won't do them back to back videos but I will just do a variety, probably maybe five Easter videos between now and a few days before Easter. So first up I've got this beautiful little Peking Bunny card really easy to do and it's actually using well the the term is punch art so you create all these shapes using your punches or your dies so I've got a mix of punches and dies here and you can create this fun little character and you don't have to have a bunny you know it doesn't have to be an Easter card it can be any other animal that you can think of if you just type in punch art or punch art cards on Pinterest you'll get loads and loads of ideas so let me show you how I've made this one so I'm using the Lisa Horton Crafts kit. This is number one, it's the first one that she's done. And I did say when I shared this in my, one of my What Did I Get videos that this is probably what I'm gonna use for most of my Easter projects. The papers in here are just wonderful. And that's what I've used for today's card. You can see here, look, you've just got all these wonderful papers and toppers. So I'm gonna be focusing on those for this year's makes. Now the card I'm making is featured in this magazine as well and I, when I made it for the magazine I sent it off obviously and then I thought I really want to do those as my Easter cards or some of my Easter cards this year so that's why I thought I'd start this series with it. So what you want to do first of all is get yourself a card blank. Now I'm using a 6x6, six six. this is shop brought so it comes in just under, it's about 5 and 7 eighths squared but this can be any shape or size card that you want, okay? So pick your card size, then you want to decide on your aperture size, so just open up your card. Now I've decided to go for an oval, I've already got my frame cut there and I've used the, these are the old Tonic Studio um, oval dies and I like these ones because you get the scalloped detail. So my main aperture size is you're looking at about three and a half by four and a half. I'm going to actually before I stick this one down you want to decorate it. It's easier to cut through this paper. If you've got a thick cardstock or pattern card that you're going to put on the top you might want to cut that first then lay this over the top and then line your die back up with your aperture that you've just cut and then cut it again but I can cut through both layers at the same time. Now because this is it's it's a slightly it's like like I said it's five and seven eighths and then one side is always slightly just under that so I just find if I've got any of the shop brought ones I just mark with a pencil a similar kind of border but if it's a piece of six by six just cut yourself a piece of five and three quarters squared and that'll be a nice matte layer to go on top so I'm just going to trim that one and I'm going to stick that one over the top. Okay, then I'm going to lay that back over the top and just tack that in place. Any tape you're using, if you've got a low tack, then it shouldn't take off any of the cardstock, like tear when you remove it, but sometimes they still do. I'm just taking some of the stickiness off of that and I'm just going to make sure I've got that pretty centred and then I'm going to stick my tape in the middle section. That way, if it does tear at all, this piece you don't really need to keep, but it is a lovely pattern. I've actually got my other one just here, so I'll use that for another project. So I'm now going to run that through my dye machine. Okay, so that's cut away perfectly. And then what I've done is using the, the next size up, which within this particular set is a scalloped edge, I then run through this die, I'll peel this all off in a minute, this die with this one around it and just tape them together. And then I ran that through using some white card and that will give you this frame which is then going to stick perfectly around like so. Now if you want to turn this into a shaker card you could put some acetate behind this. You might want to just put some vellum behind and build up a scene on top of that. That will look really nice as well. I am now going to stick this piece down here. Then I've got my inside pattern paper and again I'm just going to pop it inside here just give myself the same kind of equal white border So next we want to build our Easter character so to create the body and what I also done is I just matched another circle behind for me to write my message. If you don't want to do it like that then you could have your message on the back which you see me do in many of my cards. 
So if you want to have your message inside, then you'll want two pieces of this here. And this is a, it's about a three inch circle. I used a die for this one, or seven and a half centimetres. So two of those for the body or for the inside piece. For the head, I used my two inch punch here. So again, two inches or five centimetres. And then for the cheeks, I used this punch here. These were both from Hobby Craft quite a while ago now. This is five eighths of an inch. I always thought that was half inch, but it seems not to be, uh, or one and a half centimetres. Then for the ears, I've used my, bring in this one here. So it's the card making magic. These work really well for ears <laughs> because they're more of a squashed oval. And I, that's, I've said that a lot. That's the reason I like these ones because they're also nice for sentiments because there isn't too much white space left, but they've got the length. So they've always been um, popular. And unfortunately they are sold out from when I'm doing this video, but I'll link it and then you can always, um, think you can register your interest and be notified when they next come back into stock. For the body, I've used my plain circle dies. These are old Sizzix ones, if anybody wonders. So for the white main ears, you want something that's around, I'd say one inch wide will be fine by, this is just over three and a quarter or eight and a half centimetres by two and a half centimetres. So two of those, and then I've just used the pattern paper that all matches, it's all from that magazine. You see it's just the reverse of this piece here. And these were just the next size down on those nests of dies, but this is five eighths of an inch by two and three quarters, or one and a half centimetres by seven centimetres. Okay, I've then heat embossed my sentiment using some silver embossing powder and I pop that all really up on some foam and this was a woodware happy Easter and then we'll talk about all that because that's just some fussy cutting from the magazine. First of all I would stick down your ears. I'm going to use my quick grab glue for all of these little bits because it's only small areas that we are sticking together. So I'm just going to layer all this up. I'm going to grab the head, pop some glue on the bottom of one of the ears and it's up to you how much you bring down. This this is when your punch art will vary from person to person because someone's circle might be slightly smaller, their ears might be slightly thinner. Already that starts to change the character characteristics of your character. So it's really fun to do because everybody's is always quite different. Now I'm going to also put a little curl in the ears there. I've got box envelopes if these end up becoming quite dimensional and I'll link them in the video. Otherwise you could also pop this in a bouncy envelope and I've also got them on the channel and I'll link them as well. Now it's quite nice if you curl one ear but leave the other one straight that's quite a nice little thing to do. A little detail there but I'm quite happy with that. Then I'm going to attach it to the body. Now what I would suggest you do here is just kind of check that you're all within the card so you can see there that's all going to fit in the envelope and I can kind of slide the body in here so you can see how already that's starting to come together so I'm going to keep the circle there and I'm just going to pop some glue under there and then stick that down yeah that'll be fine just take that all out a minute And then I'm going to pop some glue just around that side there. I can slide him back in until I'm kind of happy. Let's go down a little bit further. There we go. Like so. Then with the little cheeks, I'm going to use some of my foam pads here just to make them more dimensional. And when you stick these together, you want to make sure you butt them right up to each other so the tongue can come out from underneath. So I'm just literally they're kissing each other like so. I'm happy with that. Then I'm gonna grab my googly eyes. Just pick these up, I've had these for a long, long time. Get them in all their kids' arts and craft sections along with pipe cleaners and lots of other things. So I'm just using the larger ones. And again, I'm just gonna use my quick grab glue and I'm gonna Pop them together but with a little gap. Again, if you put them right next to each other, it creates a different expression if you have them further apart. So it's entirely up to you. And if you don't have googly eyes, you can punch some black circles using your hole punch. So 
you know there's there's lots of ways to or just draw them with some you know with your marker pens then I'm going to use the enamel dots that come in the magazine for the nose and I'm going to pop the nose just in maybe do the nose before it's fine you can get it all in there anyway like so move the eye back there so I keep everything very close together around the center of this two inch circle and then I've just got a little bit of pink card here for the tongue and I'm just going to cut that kind of shape you could put a little line on there as well if you want and then I'm just going to a little bit of glue just in there and then I'm just going to slide the tongue up behind where the cheeks join together there okay then to make your whiskers just with some scrap card you want to just cut tiny I'm going to start get rid of that bit I'm going to start the smallest little slithers you can see oh that's probably too small and you can trim them once you've stuck them on I'm just you can use your trimmer if you would prefer but the smaller the better you can see all these tiny little bits and they naturally curl as well which just adds to the look of the card so I'm going to grab a black pen here and I'm just going to just randomly pop some little dots like so and then I'm just going to pop a blob of glue down there and then let's get one of these ones. Pop a little bit of glue on the end and then just place it on the cheek. In fact, the ones that are really whispery actually look really good. They kind of do their own thing just like whiskers would. And you can straighten them and kind of shape them a bit more afterwards. I've done three on each side. There we go, if I just bring that up there. You see they look really quite effective I think so that's all of those details done then I have fussy cut one of the bows from the paper pad so he's going to have a bow just there and then to create the grass along the bottom I used some of the leftover piece there I just want to cut myself a strip that's going to be wide enough to go along the bottom here I'm just going to trim like so so it's nice and neat and that's going to go in there and I'm just going to cut if you've got the scissors which I do have if, yeah no I'll do that with this I'll carry on so they both look the same otherwise you can just cut your own blades of grass just all random sizes just working my way along and then you'll have something like that and then I'm just going to Run some glue along the bottom there. Oh, I've just remembered. You should stick your grass down first. I'm wondering if I can get away. Yes, I can. Stick your grass down first. <laughs> some of you are probably thinking, how's the grass going to show? It's fine. I'm just going to pop that in like so. Just make sure it's nice and straight. Can lay that down and then I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue back in behind that you would never know there we go then I'm going to pop the bow tie just like so <laughs> huge bow there and then I've got the flowers so I'm going to have the flowers going up the side here Something like that. So I've got a little cluster of them together. I've got the heart here, which I did have up there, but I wonder maybe if I do curl that ear as well, then I can kind of pop it in there. Because what I was going to do is with this flower here that comes in the, you know, in your prints, is if you just cut away all of the petals apart from two, it looks like a little bee, a little whimsical bee. And then you can do a little trail behind. So I'm going to pop it up on some foam again. Pop in that one there. And then using that same pen, you can just draw 
little trail like so and then I'm going to put my happy Easter down there so I'll see if I've got room for that because the ear kind of takes up more of that corner you see on that one there it doesn't go up as far so I'm going to get all this stuck down so that's everything stuck down on the front and then with this piece here if you just open up the card and just lay it behind your bunny's body and then just close the card and then that way you can see it all there and then what I might do is add the heart maybe inside here like so and these there's some detail in there as well and then some final detail I'm going to add some glossy accents to the bee here and also to the centre of the flowers. And if you've got any of your sparkle pen you can add some sparkle to the ears. Again you won't really see this but the person that you give it to will notice all these little extras and also on the bow there as well. Just pop a little bit so some sparkle. There you have it. And there, just bring it up a bit closer see the shine from the flowers, you've got the movement and the googly eyes there and a little bit of sparkle as well once that dries. I think they look adorable, really fun, really cute and fun cards for Easter. So I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial and like I said the start of my Easter series, probably be every other day will be an Easter project so stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed and you've enjoyed today's tutorial please hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell that way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Check out the videos popping up now there'll be some more Easter themed ones there that you can go and watch if you'd like and uh, yeah check out those playlists that I mentioned earlier as well. Thanks for watching and I'll be back very soon. Bye!